LZW compression, uh, named for Lempel Ziv Welch. Um, we'll talk about that in this video. Uh, first, so we just were talking about Huffman coding and the idea that, hey, that's really good for sort of static things, especially if one character is independent from the next one. So a good way to go. Uh, but in reality, there's a lot of correlation between a few letters here and the next letter. And in fact, studies have s sort of shown that, um, so I'll phrase it this way, the entropy of English is about one bit per letter. What does that mean? That means <clears throat> one bit, one in, you know, 50, 50, because there's been two options for a bit. If you're trying to predict, predict the next bit, you have a 50, 50 chance. It means that if you're looking at English text, you can predict the next letter about half of the time, okay, on average. Um, so, gosh, that sort of says we could maybe do better at compression if you can give me, and we see this on our phones, right, the autocomplete on the phones. Um, we type in a few words, it's going to guess the next entire word. And it's, you know, it's correct, yeah, a bunch of the time. Uh, so that's pretty, pretty good. Um, okay. Uh, or a very related topic, uh, if you if you ever go to church and you've seen a hymnal there, you pull the hymnal open, open uh, the lyrics are to a song are kind of long, but they are compressed, and even the music is compressed. Uh, how do they do that? Ah, you often have three or four verses that are the same, that are identical. They have a special notation of music to repeat a section, and the lyrics uh, themselves, they'll sort of have the chorus just printed once and not print it every single time you come back to that same chorus. Uh, they'll sort of omit it, or they'll say chorus um, on websites and so on. So yeah, these are ways, these are obvious ways you can get compression. Um, I have a link here in the notes. I'll put it in the uh, video below. Go ahead and pause right now and go and watch that YouTube link for Wheel of Fortune. It's kind of an interesting little thing. Um, yeah, anyway. You're back, okay, yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of fun. Um, okay, so uh, LZW compression. Uh, this is an algorithm that's used a lot. It's uh, used in zip files, uh, it's GIFs, PDFs, PNGs, um, TIFF image files. It's not the only thing they use. They'll often a lot of these industrial standards sort of pick and choose. They'll use this for a certain part of the overall uh, content or they'll do some pre-processing on an image maybe, try to capture the two-dimensional features of an image uh, into a single stream and then take that single stream and try to compress that using something like LZW. So, um, okay. And in fact, there's a, a, I won't show it here, but there is a website, itty.bitty.site. Um, if you go there, you can type in whatever content you want and it encodes it into the URL. So it gives a URL that actually has embedded in the URL. Uh, it just finishes with a whole bunch of random looking characters, but that's actually a compressed version of all the text you put in. So all the information is actually in the URL. It's not sitting off on some website. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's an interesting application of, of compression. So, okay. So um, LZW algorithm. Uh, Welch in 1984 sort of made some improvements to a uh, previously known good algorithm by Lempel and Ziv in 1977. You can look this up on Wikipedia. There's a, a good example they worked through there. I'm going to work through a different example that I've contrived. Uh, and I'm going to first go through the whole process for encoding the message. Uh, and then I'm just going to mention the decoding is almost the same, but I'll talk about some of the issues. And when we talk about the decoding, it'll become clear why we're doing some of the weird stuff we're doing in the encoding. Okay, we're doing it because the receiver can play back those same steps that the encoder uh, does. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to encrypt the string. Uh, I guess if we're talking about Alibaba, maybe I know we'll say Baba ba ha ba a bay b a Baba ba. Okay, something like that. I want a lot of repetitions to really let us see how the repetitions get leveraged. Um, in reality, most files do have repetitions, but they're spread out a lot further. So, um, okay, to do this, we're gonna go ahead and have an initial dictionary. Uh, 
And we're going to say that, hey, maybe the set of an allowed initial letters are just A through E. So those are my allowed letters. So I'm going to have an initial dictionary that sets up values for A through E. I'll just assign those the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to write them down in binary here. Uh, to get five values, I need, can't do it in two bits, I need at least three bits. So, and I'll pad these out. So initially, every character is going to take three bits. Okay, so let's go ahead and start encoding this thing here. Um, let me go ahead and uh, just give me some space here. I'm going to say what we do this. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and encode B. Now, B is in my in dictionary, right? A zero, one, zero. Great. Uh, now, the catch is right now we have a single letter being a few bits. We're going to actually make a series of bits correspond to several letters. And I'm thinking, gosh, you know, uh, B was in my dictionary, great. Too bad BA wasn't already in there because if that ever gets repeated, hey, I'll get some leverage out of that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, at this point, I'm gonna add BA to my dictionary and I already used one through five, so six. BA is gonna be six. Let me go down here and BA is six, which in binary is one, one, zero. Okay, uh, great. Now I have A, I want to send that. A is in my dictionary. Uh, so I'll be zero, zero, 001. Too bad A, B wasn't in my dictionary because the next character I want to send after this, after the A, is a B. So too bad A, B wasn't in the... Well, let me go ahead and add A, B to my dictionary. I'll go ahead and make A, B as seven. So, okay. Which sure will I guess will be one, one, one. Okay, uh, great. Now I need to add B, A. Hey, wait, B, A. That's already in my dictionary. I just added that a couple steps ago. That's six. Okay, so I can go ahead and send out six here. Okay, and that's going to go ahead and count as the B and the A. Okay, so cool. That's my first win. Uh, these three bits are actually representing two characters from my original plain text. Okay, <laughs> of course I'm getting greedy now. I'm like, oh, too bad BAB hadn't been in the dictionary. If BAB had been in the dictionary, then Gosh, I would have gotten even more mileage out of that. So let me go ahead and add BAB as 8 to my dictionary right now. Do, 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 do. Uh, BAB will be 8, which in binary is 1000. Oh, gosh, uh, that takes 4 bits to, to send on the wire. I'd better start using from now on. I'm going to start using 4 bits to um, send, this, send this along. Okay, so... Great, I'm coming along here. I've sent the B, I've sent the A. I need to send the next thing, which is a B. Oh, too bad BA isn't in my, oh, BA is in my dictionary again. Ooh, is BAA in the dictionary? Oh, BAA is not there. But I can go ahead and send the BA, which again, that's six, which is a one zero. Uh, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna add BAA as nine to my dictionary. Oh, but what did I just say? I've, I'm suddenly switching to needing to switch to four bits, so. Okay, so I'm going to send 0110. Zero, one, zero. That's going to go ahead and be the BA that I send along. And I'm going to add to my dictionary BAA right now as 9. So here I'm just keeping track. This is redundant. I already have it. I'm keeping track of it down low uh, in my chart. But I'm just, to myself, noting where I'm adding these different things. Okay, so, and we're trying to read these notes later. This, this, row, that, this third row here might help you. Okay, I'm coming along. I've sent along the BA. Uh, now I want to send... Okay, and we'll go through a few steps. I'll do one more out loud, then I'll let pause and let you do about three or four steps. Uh, a, B, A, I wanna send A, uh, do I have A, B in my dictionary? A, B is in my dictionary, that's seven, okay. Do I have A, B, A? No, I don't have A, B, A. Again, where am I getting that? That's this and the next characters I wanna send, A and then a B and then an A. But I do have A, B, so I can send A, B as a single output. Uh, a, B was seven, okay. But you know, I wish that ABA had been in there. I'm gonna add that as word number 10. So notice that every time I emit uh, a few bits for the next uh, few letters, uh, or maybe the next one letter, maybe the next two letters, uh, I'm gonna add another code word to my dictionary. My dictionary is growing every single code word I emit, okay? Uh, ABA is 10, which is 1010 in binary. Let me go ahead and give myself a little bit of room here. Okay, so yeah, and now I'm sitting here. I want to emit the all this stuff here. So go find the 
next few things. And I'll let you pause, unpause. So I'm going to go ahead and send off the next bits. What can I send? It has to be at least an A. Do I have AA? No, I don't have that. Okay, so I'm stuck just sending A. Gosh, that was one, which I'm going to use four bits to send it as one. And I wish that AA was in there. So add AA as word number 11. Again, binary, that's just adding one. So, okay, great. Uh, so I just sent an A, but not more. Uh, now I want to send A. Hey, I have AA in there. I just barely added it, right? So I'm going to send that as 11, 1011. Okay. Too bad that AAB hadn't been in there. If it were, I'd be great. So let me add AAB for next time that happens. It's like a Boy Scout, be prepared. Um, okay, so go ahead and do the next one. So I sent out AA. So I want to start sending it to B. So pause. Okay, so we look at this, we have B, do we have BA? Yeah, that was six. Do we have B, A, E? Oh, I haven't even seen an E at all yet. So, okay, so B, A. Um, okay. We're not going to get much mileage out of this. We're never actually going to end up repeating B, A, E. But I can go ahead and uh, the algorithm says add that. That's 13. B, A was six. We're using four four bits now, so okay. Uh, and should we ever mention BAE again, it will be in there. Um, 13 will be at one to that. Okay, and now we're gonna have a few boring ones. Uh, e, uh, EB. Uh, nope, don't have EB, so I'm just gonna send the E. Uh, and that will be five which will be as four bits will be zero, one, zero, one. Okay. And I wish, by the way, that EB had been in the dictionary. If, if it were, I could have just sent that. So EB as 14. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So now we need to send the B, B, E. Do we have that? We had B something, we added the E somewhere, but we don't have a B, E. Um, okay, so uh, we'll add BE to our dictionary, but we're just going to send along the B. That's all we can fit right now, which was back a good old two. Okay, and now hopefully we're going to hit some, around now we're going to start getting more leverage out of there. Getting past this E, this new symbol, sort of a whole series of stuff wasn't fitting, but uh, adding BE as 15. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. E, okay, I have EA. E, now I have EB, but not EA, so that's going to be our. I'll get us past there. I'll just send the E, which is a 5, which is 101, and I'm going to add EA to my dictionary. And now, just another thing to represent or notice hey, we're going up to. Uh, we need another bit here to this. So at this point, we're going to be using five bits for every single letter we send. Even as just a single letter, like if we come across a D, we'll use five bits to transmit it. Okay. Uh, and we'll see why the receiver, I mean, the receiver is going to need that so they know how many bits is the next thing to look up. Uh, and we'll talk about how the dictionary is getting set. Okay, so now we're coming along and, hey, A, I have an AB, good. Do I have an ABA? Hey, I have an ABA. Do I have an ABAB? No. But I have ABA, that was down under 10, right? So let me send a 10 as five bits, that's ABA. Okay. And what am I gonna to add to my dictionary? I'm gonna add ABAB as 17. So what am I keeping track of? I'm keeping track of the bits that I'm sending out. That's the second row from the top there. Um, and I'm keeping track of the dictionary that I'm building up. Which really, the binary representation is just for convenience. Uh, the important part for me is, hey, which number goes with which code word? Or vice versa. 
Okay. So yeah, that went ahead and said sent A B A B, and now I need to sell the Baba A to go, and I see that B A B is in there. So again, I'm that's going to be one of my wins. B A B was under eight. Da, da, da. I still have an AA. Let me, let me move this window over. Oh gosh, it's going to be hard to move this window over. I'm now spilling over lines. Uh, I'm going to make the text smaller. Sorry. Okay, so yeah. And by the way, what did I add to the dictionary? I added Baba. Uh, and now in the future, if Baba comes up again, it's come up several times in, in different places. If it comes up again at the beginning of a code, we're, we're going to be able to send it out in just a few bits. Okay, and now we're left with A and an A, hey, which is there as 11. So at that point, we're going to be done. Uh, the AA can get sent out as 11, filled out to five bits. And that's my end of my message. Won't add anything new to the dictionary. I've composed my entire message on the second line here. And I built up this big, huge dictionary. Okay. Okay, so we can sort of see how patterns, repeated patterns, are getting built up and maybe can save us and get us some compression. Uh, we're building up these longer and longer things in our dictionary, and they're just naturally patterns that happen to be occurring in our input. As, as every time we have repetitions or repetitions in the right place, at least, uh, we're getting these wins. Okay. So for instance, you know, if, again, like I see if you baba, baba 18 in about five bits, I won't need, you know, I originally had three bits per letter and I have four, I don't need 12 bits, five bits is giving me that entire, see, that amount. So, okay. So that's all nice and well. Um, and I'm glossing over some things. How do you know you're done? That way, that might be where we use 000 as a special escape sequence, hey, I'm done with the message, something like that. Okay, uh, so what do we do? We encode characters into numbers, groups of characters, uh, sequences, characters into, into um, numbers. Uh, when I want to send this message, unlike uh, Huffman codes where I sent the entire dictionary, then the message, uh, here's the problem. My dictionary is getting really big. In fact, the dictionary is about as long as my message is. Okay, so if I were to send this whole dictionary along uh, and then send my message after that, that's going to be not so interesting. Here's the really cool concept. Uh, the receiver, as they are getting this series of bytes, as they're getting this 01000011110, they can not only be decoding it, uh, but they can be building up the rest of the dictionary, as long as they know what the initial dictionary was. So we'll need to agree in advance, or maybe I'll send along, here's my initial dictionary. A is one, B is two, C is three, D is four, E is five. That initial dictionary. Once I have that initial dictionary, I'm building up as I see the message. The receiver can be scanning these bits, and they can be building up that dictionary in the exact same way as I am. And that's what the win is. Um, once I'm done encoding the message, I throw that extended dictionary away. I was only using it for any pattern, any repeated patterns I see in the future of the current message. So that is kind of cool. So, da -da -da. so yeah, the cool idea immediately after encoding a chunk of input, think of the one character longer string that you wish you would have had and add that to the dictionary. And the key observation that makes this work, the decoder can reconstruct the same dictionary that you just built up. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, and this kind of explains why you may have been wondering is like, gosh, I said, I'm going to send out 110 to represent BA. Uh, too bad BAB hadn't in the dictionary. I'm going to add it there now. And that explains, well, why didn't I just send out 8 as BAB right now? So, well, the receiver would have been totally clueless, is the answer. So, because uh, they didn't know about BAB was going to be in the dictionary and they wouldn't know what that number 8 represented. So, okay. Um, a couple things to be careful about. First of all, how many bits are you using per word? It grows over time. We'll go from three up to four up to five and keep on growing. Um, 
And it's really important. The receiver needs to know, hey, how many bits do I grab from the next word to, to do it? Uh, grab the next five bits. Oh, look that up in the dictionary. Grab the next five bits, the next five bits. Eventually, hey, now I need to be grabbing six bits. By the way, the receiver knows exactly when we're going to go up. It's like, hey, I know what the dictionary size is, so I can go up as well at the same time the sender goes up. Um, one thing to know is that the receiver is kind of one word behind, okay? So say you're the receiver, okay, and you got zero, 010, zero. you're like, oh, that's B, you got zero, zero, 001, that's A. You got 110, one, it's like, ooh, that's a new word. I don't know what that is, okay? Because um, that was not in the initial dictionary, okay? Um, Let me just think about this. Oh, right. Uh, uh, yeah, so they get 010. Zero, zero. They're like, oh, okay, that, that's B. And they're like, oh, BA is going to get added to the dictionary. But they don't know that at that point. It's only when they see the next three bits, when they see get the 001, then the receiver can go back and say, oh, BA is the thing that the sender wished had been in the dictionary, and that's what they're adding at location 6. So the receiver can't really... It sees B, but it can't add BA to the dictionary until it gets that next letter A. Okay, then it sees, oh, I got A, hey, well, okay, um, that's when I add BA to the dictionary. Uh, and I know that the sender is adding something, A something to the dictionary, but I don't know what. Uh, and then it comes along and gets, oh, hey, I'm getting that six, which is BA. Oh, it was A, that starts with B, it was AB that the sender must have added to the dictionary here. So the receiver is, again, just sort of, it's reading this, but it doesn't know, so it knows this second line. It scrolls up and use the second line knows what's on the second line, but it doesn't know what's being added on the third line until one word later. Okay, so there is one little tricky case if you're working on this at home or say as a homework. Um, what if the next word that you're adding isn't one that is in the dictionary yet? Okay, so you're the sender and you're going to add a new word to the dictionary. Um, and the word that you're adding to the dictionary uh, is, or the word you're sending right now, is one that, because the receiver is one step behind, it's not even in their dictionary yet. Hmm. That can happen. Okay. And so here's, here's an example. Suppose uh, CXY is in the dictionary, but CXYC isn't, is the sender just barely adds it. The sender is saying, hey, I'm adding CX, um, here's the, the sequence that the receiver knows about. By the way, I'm adding CYXC to the dictionary. And then the next thing they happen to see on the input is CX, CYXC. Okay. Well, they're going to send a word and they're like, the receiver is like, oh, hey, the you know, look up this word and the first letter is what the I need to add a, on the previous step. Wait a minute. I'm looking up a word that's not there. Okay. So uh, fortunately, it still works, though. What we can do... At first, I was thinking, oh, if that ever happens, the sender needs to hold off. They can't, they're like, oh, I'm just, I want to use the code that I just barely added, but the receiver is a step behind. They won't know it. So one solution, it would work. Um, one solution would be, hey, the sender holds off on using that brand new code, even though they want to use it right here. They know that, oh, I'm one step, the receiver is one step behind. I can't use it yet. That would make sense. That would work. But you can be a little bit cleverer uh, and say, hey, the receiver is going to be able, when they see something that's not in the dictionary, they're still going to be able to figure out what's going on um, because they know the previous word I sent. So uh, they come along, I add CYXC to my dictionary, uh, and I see CYXC on the, on the input. Um, so it's something like this. I send CYX, which they know about. I see, and I added CYXC to my dictionary. Um, so I come along here, I come to the CYXC. I'm like, hey, I'm going to send that new code. The receiver is like, oh, it's a new code. I know that it's CYX followed by something. Um, but it's, uh, it's going to be CYX. But what is the first letter? And it's a new code. It must They must have just barely used that code. And so that code must be the one they just barely entered, which was CYX something. So they know the code is, uh, they need to add is, CYX followed by something, and it's the first letter of this thing, which is C blah, 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 CYX followed by something. Hey, that's C. 
oh, it's going to be that C that they move over. Okay, so uh, technically, and again, you can work through the Wikipedia example as well, um, but yeah, if you want to use a word that isn't in the receiver's dictionary, go ahead. The receiver will know that, hey, the one letter I need to add to my previous word is going to be the first letter of the word that I'm seeing right now, um, or the first letter of the word that I actually just got added. So it's going to be the same as that previous one. It's the word, put it this way, in that situation, the word that's getting added to the dictionary has the same first and last letter, must have the first same first and last letter. And they know all but the last letter. So, okay. So that's the tricky little bit. Um, yeah, so that is this. So I think I have on a homework, I will give you an initial dictionary and I'll give you a long string that I already encoded and ask you to uh, decode it. So you'll have to play the receiver's part, which I didn't quite work through, but you use the same technique. You start with that initial dictionary and you add things to it as you come along. Okay, so uh, I think that's all I wanna say about LZW. Da, 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 da. Um, oh yeah, one last thing here. Uh, this doesn't have to be characters, and I turn a character into a number, I start with just A, B, C, D, and so on. It can be any bit of data. In fact, you can just sort of say, hey, initially I have two values, zero and one, um, and I have a bit stream, I want to encode a bit stream. And certain bit patterns tend to occur more frequently than others. Yeah, you can use the same algorithm, um, saying, hey, my initial two words in the dictionary were zero and one, with values one and two, maybe. Uh, and then I'll just add that. So yeah, I can take an arbitrary binary file and use LZW encoding on that as well. Okay. So yeah, that'd be a good uh, project if you want to do that. Go ahead and implement this and try it on different files. Try it on text, see how good you get. Uh, try it on binary files, see uh, how good you get, uh, say, you know, the raw JPEG, a, a raw file, a raw image file, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, I'm not going to talk more about compression. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, oh, uh, I do have a URL to another example if you don't like the Wikipedia example and you didn't like my example. Uh, so that will be listed in the notes and below. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, from somebody at MIT, Dr. Katrina LeKertz. Uh, she also mentions that, hey, uh, if you have something where the frequency of some letters or sequences are sort of changing over time, really, we're talking about a really long thing, right? You're sending a movie or whatever. Uh, yeah, if everything's really dark, you might get certain bit patterns that are repeated and you're doing a really good job of compression. And then especially the scenes that are really bright or really bluish or whatever. Yeah, okay, all those words you sort of encoded aren't really getting used anymore. You're gonna be building up new long keywords that are being repeated a lot, so, so that's good. Um, and so one thing you can do is you can say, hey, at prearranged times, every you know one megabyte or whatever, I'm gonna throw the old dictionary away, go back to that initial dictionary that we had and start rebuilding things up. And that way, if your input source has repetitions, but what it's repeating sort of shifts and changes over time, uh, you can maybe do better there, who knows? Okay, um, and LZU, by the way, like I said, it's used in these other formats here in conjunction with a lot of other tricks and algorithms and in conjunction with Huffman coding um, for certain parts of that, so. Okay, and I think that's just the last note. I want to mention uh, lossy versus lossless compression. Uh, just as a fundamental thing, uh, uh, lossless compression is what I usually think of. Every time you encode something, you get the encrypted or the encoded version, you can recover the original exactly bit for bit. But there's also the idea of lossless, or sorry, lossy encoding, where, hey, what you get back when you de decode something, you don't get back exactly what you got, but you get back something that's pretty close. And it might be close enough for humans. If it's audio, yeah, it turns out I might record it at a very high fidelity. When you play it back, the human ear can't hear certain pitches. You don't really need to recreate exactly all those pitches. So, okay. Um, so... Yeah, uh, and it turns out PNG is a lossless format, JPEG is lossy, MP4 is lossy. People talk about, oh, the MP4 doesn't sound quite as good as such and such. Yeah, it's arguable about what the human ear can actually discern. So, okay. Um, okay, so I'll uh, 
stop there and we will move on. So that's all I'm going to talk about compression. We're going to move on to other algorithms and other types of representations in future lectures.